Well, howdy doody! I have a new one here that I found last weekend from Thunderhead Brewery out of Kearney, Nebraska. I've never heard, or I've never had anything from them before. I didn't know anything about them. Uh, they had several of their products where I was, but I just bought this because I, you know, hadn't having not had anything before, I thought I'd try with one product and go from there. They ran $8.99 a six pack, not crazy expensive, but I don't want to spend $9.99 for three or four products if you know they're not gonna work for me. So having said that, <laughs> it's six and a half percent. Their website doesn't give me any information or any stats. They do say uh, it is, let's see, I'm going to paraphrase because I don't remember exactly, but uh, they said it is It is intensely hopped, uh, oh, what's that, how they, uh, balanced with uh, their floor malted to raw barley. Ah, uh, look it up. <laughs> Thunder Head Brewery. Uh, it's got a nice color, uh, uh, typical color of, of, of uh, many IPAs. Although many now are going to that more golden, but most IPAs uh, were this color at one time, kind of a, a light copper-esque. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. All craft beer is, is subject to taste, right? But IPA specifically really... Um, <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> seem to polarize craft beer geeks, you know. Um, when I say this, I, I upset people inevitably, but uh, hops are trendy. Uh, there's certain hops, you know, it didn't seem like a few years ago everybody wanted to drop an Amarillo and everything. Now everything has to have mosaic or... Uh, or citra in it, you know. Uh, it, it's just, it's just, you know, it's it's the evolution of of what it is. Craft beer, uh, things change, so you have to kind of keep moving along. Uh, and this is more of that older school IPA rather than what's being done right now. Although I don't know the exact ingredients that are in this, but it feels like that older, chewier IPA. The aromas aren't aren't intense uh, to me anyway, or what do I what I have here? But they are nice. They are pleasant. They are there. And the flavors are nice. They're balanced very well. Uh, this is a very well balanced IPA. It's not a you know it's, it's not today's big hop heavy, very light malt bodied IPA using a lot of you know citrus and tropical fruit you know it, it, it's this is not that IPA uh, I'm trying to describe some exact flavors here it's a little different I certainly get a little hint of, I, or not a little hint, I get, I certainly get pine and, and grapefruit as you typically get. There's something else here I haven't quite deciphered yet. I'm trying to figure out. I'm actually, yeah, that's it. I, I'm getting I'm getting some molasses and some, some anise on it, which is, isn't typical of an IPA, but I'll be damned if that's not what I'm tasting. And maybe my taster's way off today. <laughs> you know? I mean, let, let, let's, let's be honest. I mean, what we do throughout the day affects our taste buds. If I ate something before, well, I didn't, but, you know. What tastes like something one day could taste different to you another day was what I was getting at. But, um... To round it out, because I've seemed to have lost direction. <laughs> that happens. Sometimes I know where I want to go, but I can't I get all. Anyways, <laughs> Crowdbuster Mid American IPA, Thunderhead Brewing Company. Yeah, I, I'm not gonna put it in the holy crap you gotta buy category for for me right now, 
but I, I would, I don't, and I'm not sure if it's a buy again for me, but I think it's crafted well enough that I would want to buy other products from this company. Does that make sense to you? There you go.